Like the video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on those notifications. And once you're done, leave a comment down below and I just might end up responding. Longevity is one of the greatest aspects of a legendary WWE career, with people managing unbelievable resumes with World Wrestling Entertainment. Look at a guy like Brooklyn Brawler, who managed to hold a position with the company for a staggering 33 years. Very impressive, but then you also realize WWE doesn't really give a shit about loyalty, seeing as Brawler was thrown into a pot with seven other employees and fired on the spot back in the spring cleaning of 2016. What I'm getting at here is that no one is truly ever safe in WWE, and any of these names really are up for grabs, or more so, up for dropping. I'm D. Wicket, and these are the 10 WWE superstars who might be forced into retirement next year. Big Show, please retire. <laughs> Number 10, Jason Jordan. An unfortunate start to the list, the fate of Jason Jordan's career will ultimately be decided by the end of 2019. Suffering a neck injury earlier in the year, Jordan has remained out of action and off of television for so long that he's actually taken up a role as a producer backstage. While this isn't an absolute guarantee that he's done for inside of the ring and his current goal is clearly still getting back in there, it does leave his fate up to question. It would really be a shame, as despite being split from American Alpha and lumped in with a weird Kurt Angle storyline, uh, he still clearly has a bright future ahead of himself. Son of a b whoa, whoa, hold on, you're getting out of line. My son's legitimately hurt. Go home and stay home until you're medically clear. Okay? He can't, he can't talk Damn to Damn it, go home! Number nine, Kane. He's a fucking mayor. He literally has to retire next year, right? Like, how can you professionally wrestle, even part-time, while also handling the politics of an entire city? Like, it's not that he's even essential to the product anymore. This isn't 1997, it's 2018. He's wrestled for 21 years. Let the man move on before he goes all Taylor Swift, 22 joke. But seriously, this isn't the big red monster anymore. He's the big red mayor, or the big blue mayor. I don't know his political affiliations. I just know he needs to stick to them instead of sticking to the squared circle. Glenn Jacobs, you tell me that your team is celebrating now. Yeah, we sure are, yeah. Um, i just really happy. Uh Number eight, Matt Hardy. While he's made it abundantly clear that he isn't planning on retiring anytime soon, we tend to think a little bit otherwise. He will likely make an eventual return to the ring after his leave of absence, but I mean, really, then what? WWE clearly doesn't know how to handle the broken gimmick, at least as not as well as TNA did, and knowing Vince, the team with Bray probably isn't going to make it to the end of 2019. He ranks along the list because he's a hardy boy, after all, and he's not the one who's probably going to kill himself jumping off the top of Barkley's center, so Vince knows where the dollars are. But how the fuck are they going to keep him interesting if they don't know how to do the broken gimmick? Ah, yes. Greetings, my siblings. Number seven, Rhino. Now, yes, I, I do know he technically just retired on Monday Night Raw like a few weeks ago, but like, he didn't really, he left Raw, but he didn't officially retire from professional wrestling, which can be easily proven since, you know, he came out on WWE's YouTube page saying that he wasn't retiring from professional wrestling. This is Rhino here. I am not retiring. I had no plans on retiring. While this probably means SmackDown Live will be in his near future, I think that 2019 is a good time to call it quits for Rhino, or more likely, WWE to get bored of him and cut him from their pay roster. Mm, it feels bad saying, but you can you can see this one happening, can't you? Rhino, Slater's got a Here is your winner, he you gonna feel bad for Heath Slater, he just had to end his friend's career. Number six, Titus O'Neil. I mean, he's he's just Titus. That like that's the thing. Inside of the ring, he's just Titus O'Neil. He's fucking boring, but outside of the ring, he's one of the top spokesmen for the company. He's got the whole dad of the year kissing my son on the mouth thing going on. Fuck. Even just outside of the literal ring, he is a goddamn great mouthpiece. Like make him a manager. Please, I have wanted Titus O'Neil as a wrestling manager, as a heel, for so long. Think of how good Titus Worldwide would be. Think of how good Apollo Crews could be if he was a heel with a mouthpiece. He would be in the upper mid card. Instead, he's just Apollo. <laughs> I don't want Titus wrestling anymore. I, I just don't want it anymore. It, this one's entirely personal. I just really want heel manager Titus O'Neil. Please. Number five, Jeffrey Hardy. The dude is 41 years old and still falls off of every ladder he sees. God damn it, Jeff, you are going to die. Oh my God, I don't believe it. 
Number four, Goldust. Goldust is pretty much the epitome of an old school wrestler who still has a job because of their popularity and staying power. Literally look to any other singular mid-carder from the 90s and you will find none of them holding a position inside of the ring with the WWE. Goldust is special simply because of the fact that he is Goldust. He's weird. He's quirky. He's still sort of metrosexual-ish. I, I think... I honestly don't know what metrosexual means. Oh well, you get the point. He's held a job long enough, but he's just, he's never been less relevant than right now. Last year, WWE tried to do a heel turn with him against R-Truth, and it was fucking weird, and it didn't go anywhere. And when heel runs don't work late in your career, that's when you kind of know that the time has come. You might think, well, there's no way they'd let him go. I mean, he's gold dust, but then you remember the Brooklyn Brawler, and well, shit. Number three, Heath Slater. Recording this on the night of TLC, it appears WWE got a little bit excited and blew one of their loads early again. I mean, this Heath Slater storyline had been going on for, what, two weeks? And as of right now, he's already turned his back completely on Baron Corbin, who he was never even aligned with in the first place. They could have done a full story with Slater slowly turning to the bad side for real as a referee and being all crooked and corrupt for Baron Corbin and then slowly turn him back, but no, they literally climax the story before it even turned three weeks old. Because of inconsistent and just bizarre thing like this, one has to assume that Slater still isn't highly valued in the company. While he always seems to manage to come around, at one point in time, people thought the same thing of Damian Sandow, and well, look what happened to him. While the 2018 landscape certainly seems more fitting for someone like Heath Slater to keep finding success, we really never know in Vince McMahon's WWE, do we? I would like to have a chance at the WWE World Cup tournament at Crown Jewel. There's one problem. You're just not any good. Number two, The Big Show. Insert here, end of the year retirement list Big Show joke. Yeah, we get it. Big Show was an obvious pick, but come on. He's the fucking Big Show. Like, he was an absolutely required entry. He had to be on the list. So let's mix it up a little bit, and we're going to call this a conjoined entry. So we're also going to give the number two spot to someone you might not have seen coming, someone you might not see. John Cena. Because that's fucking right, he's pretty much officialized that he's no longer wrestling professionally full time to focus on his blossoming career in Hollywood. John Cena, the poster boy, the big match money maker, the champ that's no longer here. Just kind of feels weird, doesn't it? 2019 will likely be the very obvious retirement of Big Show. Big Show, please retire. <laughs> That's not the response I thought, I thought she was going to get mad about that. And the much more surprising one of John Cena. I wanted to take a second tonight to tell you that I have no idea what the future holds. So I focus on the now. It can't be gone completely, can it? Crown Jewel's nostalgia fest for the sake of a Saudi prince wasn't a step in the right direction at all. But The Undertaker is 53 years old. He just simply cannot keep doing this to his body. He can't go anymore like he used to. And because of it, his legacy only diminishes with each coming year. Let the man rest, Vince. Rest in peace. Maybe not. Maybe don't let him die, but you get the idea. Good. And those are the 10 WWE superstars who might be forced into retirement by 2019. What are your thoughts? Let us know in the comments down below who you think we missed after liking the video, subscribing to the channel, and notifications in that damn bell. Thank you.